gently does it. When you're lifting large, heavy objects next to an old building containing nuclear waste, you don't want any nasty surprises. And this crane operation ran like clockwork. It might look like any old shipping container, but inside the metal exterior is part of an engineering marvel, ready to do one of the most important jobs we've ever taken on at the Sellafield site, retrieving the nuclear waste from our oldest legacy storage building, the pile fuel cladding silo, a locked vault which was not built with emptying in mind. In total, nine pieces of this huge retrievals machine have been lifted up and slotted together on the structure we've built next to the silo, ready to reach in through holes we've already cut in the side walls. Holes you can't see now because, thankfully, these huge doors are protecting us from the nuclear waste inside. In the silo, uh, you know, major uh, milestones for us just now around bringing the, the retrieval system, the, the nine uh, modules, uh, on, onto the facility. Um, so this is the first time that the old facility meets the new, the new technology. Before its arrival at Sellafield, the equipment needed to be designed and manufactured, something we achieved with our supply chain partners in less than three years. The retrieval system has already been built, tested and commissioned on a replica of the silo wall up in Rosyth to give us the confidence it will work when it starts its job in a radioactive environment. The work that we do, uh, rightfully so, is highly regulated. When you work with radioactive materials, um, you've, you've got quite a bit more safety considerations and security considerations. So by doing some of this work, preliminary work, off-site, uh, we're able to relax some of those requirements because we don't have the radioactive material that we're dealing with. There has been a significant number of people involved in this, this uh, project. At our peak, we had probably 320 people involved across three different sites. Getting the waste out of one of the world's oldest nuclear waste stores involves bringing in a specially built steel box inside a transport container, lifting it out of the container so its lid can be unbolted, and then lifting the box up to the level where we've cut the holes, where it can be filled by the crane which reaches into the silo to grab the waste. All this is done while sealing in the atmosphere inside the old silo, which is filled with argon to prevent fire risk. And for the first time, we can now show what the CGI looks like for real. The equipment at the ground level where the box is lifted out of and into the transport package. This robotic arm, the same as ones working in modern car factories, will be loosening and tightening the lid on the box. It will also run a swab around the seal to check there's no contamination before the box full of waste is transported away. For those who will be overseeing the job of getting the waste out, seeing all the equipment arrive is hugely significant. It's exciting times at the moment because um, I've been here previously on, the, on this facility and I've seen the structure getting built and everything like that. Um, and we've also got a a clock that's ticking down to that day and it's coming closer now and actually seeing today the, the unit's getting lifted up onto the roof, it's um, that time's like finally here. Nearly a year of training has gone into making people like Phil and Dan the experts who'll be able to teach others to do the job. We have down at Darsbury a test facility um, where we have, um, it's a virtual crane simulator, so it's an exact replica of um, the boom crane that we're going to be using for retrieving the waste, and it's modelled on a 3D computer system. It's just something that's never been done before. Um, the waste's been in the silo for 50 or 60 years. Um, this project's been on ongoing for, for decades now, and it's just getting to the point where um, we're in readiness for removing the waste. So it just seemed like an attractive job to come to. We're expecting 2020 to be the year when we can properly start getting the waste out because that's when the plant which will be storing it for decades to come will be finished and ready. The fact we've installed the retrievals equipment ahead of being ready to store the waste would not have seemed possible five years ago when getting the waste out of this sealed store seemed an engineering challenge too far. To think of uh, where we are now um, compared to five years ago without um, you know, a real strategy that was going to get, get us there uh, to this point as early as we, we have. It's quite remarkable actually the success of the project. We believe 
once we start sustained retrievals uh, in the middle of 2020, that it'll take two years to complete uh, compartment five, the first compartment that we're going into. I'm very confident because of the commissioning that we've done, that when we get to the point of pressing the go button, that everything will work the way we expect it to.